I went to America, hiked across California, and joined a content house of shiny hunters and professional players to chase down some of the rarest Sinnoh Pokemon ever seen. But how did I get here? This is so cliche. It's November 30th, 2023, and Pokemon Go has just announced their fourth regional tour, an annual event focusing entirely on a single region of the Pokemon world. Similar to GoFest, there's also going to be a second IRL version of the event a week before the global experience, this time hosted in Los Angeles, California. And while scrolling Twitter that night, I see that friend of the channel Professor X is organising a meetup. When I first saw it, my initial reaction was thinking, wow, that's cool, wish I could go. And then I continued scrolling. Then I scrolled back up. Wait, why can't I go? Contrary to how it feels sometimes, I am in fact a grown adult. And if I want to go all the way to America to play Pokemon with people I met on the internet, that's totally something I can do. Regardless of how ill-advised it sounds when I say it out loud. After discussing it with Rex for a while, I eventually talked myself into it. I've been interested in the idea of meeting up with people like this for a while, and not only will Rex be there, but also Venti, another good friend who I met through the Ribbon Master community, who also became my mentor and rival during my first draft league, and he was instrumental in getting my Sableye to the UK so I could start my Ribbon Guide video. Not to mention plenty of other cool people who are already making plans to go. To top it all off, this year's tour is going to be all about the Sinnoh region. Like many people my age, I have a lot of good memories with Generation 4, and it felt like the perfect backdrop for such a big adventure. Before I know it, it's February 2024, and I have plane tickets, an approved travel application, and as many British sweets and biscuits as I could fit into my carry-on case. I have everything I could possibly need, including something I could do without. Anxiety. For what it's worth, I've never been nervous about flying. In fact, I've done it many times before in my life, and this isn't even my first time going to America. As a kid, flying was one of my favourite parts about going on holiday, because it meant I could just sit and play on my DS for several hours in one sitting, and an aeroplane is literally the only place where my parents couldn't tell me to put it down and go outside. But this is my first time doing something like this on my own. Planning, organising, booking flights, applying for visas and insurance, navigating airports, all of this was new to me, and I was pretty nervous about something going wrong. I couldn't stop thinking back to a time when I was 7 years old, and I lost my DS and almost all of my games by leaving them behind on a plane transfer, which also just so happened to be on the way home from America. While I was able to get most of my games back through insurance, I still couldn't get over the loss of the Pokemon on my original copy of Diamond, and if something like that happened again, I would be devastated. As my flight got closer and closer, I had a lot of nervous energy. But at that point, I'd already packed my bags, checked my documents, gone over my plans, and then done it all again countless times. There was nothing more I could do but wait and try to get some rest. Finally, it's February 14th, and after a short nap, I got up at 1 in the morning for the longest Wednesday of my life. My flight leaves at 5 in the morning, and in line with my crippling fear of being late for things, I rock up to the airport at half past 1, just in time to find out the check-in desk wouldn't open for another 2 hours. In my defence, the airport recommends showing up 4 hours early for international flights, and if I'd arrived any later, I would have spent that extra time just being stressed out at home. While I had a lot of waiting ahead of me on this journey, fortunately the travel montage was starting, which meant I'd be in California before I knew it. After four and a half hours in Cardiff, finding a shiny skitty in Amsterdam, two hours in line at American Customs, and around 11 hours of actual flying, I was free to roam America. I was two hours of standing in line. I'm knackered. I, I need something to eat so badly. Thanks to the 8 hour time zone difference, my 19 hours of travel since 1am meant it was only 2pm by the time I left the airport, so I still had a full afternoon ahead of me. This was mostly spent gathering up all the people who had already arrived in LA. I met Athy at the airport, then caught a bus to meet Pixelate, who drove us down to the beach where we found Jay Long and the professors Rex and Tops, before heading back to the bus terminal to pick up a BB. With as many people crammed into the car as physically possible, we began driving towards our accommodation for the weekend, although not before pulling over for a last minute okay, enamorous okay, raid on the way. Yeah, on the map, like, if you take a right where well, I, I need to physically see uh, like uh, two blocks. Okay, if, focus, it's focus on the road. It's super simple, I'll oh, tell you, okay? From a park, around. But I thought that the park you guys went to was a green space. Wait, aren't they gonna spawn again at like no, no, this is it. This, this is, is the last, last, this is the last round. There was, there was like a midday wave, 1 p.m., then 5 p.m. Lame. Once everyone got settled in, I got a few trades done before finally crashing for the night, ready to see what tomorrow would bring. <sighs> After a night of moderately good sleep, I was expecting Thursday to be pretty laid back. The Sinotor event didn't start until Friday, and we were still waiting on a few more people who were due to arrive. 
It also brought most of my games with me, so I was hoping to maybe get some multiplayer activities done, like battling or record mixing. But as we went out to get pancakes, I discovered that Rex had other plans, and before I knew it, we were on our way to Griffith Park to get the authentic Diamond and Pearl experience, by climbing a really big mountain. Oh my god. Oh man, that is really good though. Oh. I'm not built for this. That's Hollywood. Kind of. <laughs> After about 45 minutes of uphill hiking, we stopped to catch our breath and explore the famous Griffith Observatory. Because because of it, you know, it's actually moving the pegs into position. Well, yeah. I'm back on the way. Well, I don't want to bring down the mood, at this point I do have to mention that I suffer from a rare genetic condition called cystic fibrosis. CF affects people in many ways, but without getting into the gory details, you could describe it in simple terms as a lung condition. And while my health has thankfully been quite good in recent years, this kind of strenuous activity is not something I'm well equipped for. At this point, I was already feeling the burn, and the Hollywood sign was still a couple of hours away, so I had to genuinely consider if I could make it the rest of the way on this hike. But after grabbing some lunch at the cafe at the end of the universe and loading up on salt, I agreed to press onwards, but on the condition that Rex took my bag. Okay, so... We'll try to... Okay, so I've come to peer pressure. We're gonna see if we can walk all the way over there. <laughs> A reminder for how I feel right now, so I can compare it in like 30 minutes. Oh, Alright, let's do this. Deer down there somewhere. Oh no, the beginning of that, the hike was way, way. Yeah. Yeah, we're crushing it. We're crushing it. And then like at the end, we're just gonna show up and then Nick's gonna show up there and then like one more is added to the party. Yeah. According to the maps, the rest of the hike was mostly flat ground. As it turns out, the map lied and half an hour later, we were scrambling up the steepest slope imaginable. <laughs> By the time we reached the top, we were barely any closer to the sign and we'd actually lost two members of our party who decided to head back instead of going uphill. Oh my god, finally made it to the top. Ah. <laughs> and this mountain boring as hell. For those of us that remained, we hiked a long and treacherous road, risking life and limb to see a bunch of big white letters on a mountain, as Rex continually promised that every new stretch we passed was the hardest part. We are going to die. This will be the last recorded video of me. If I die, Rex made me do this. Morgan, you did it! Look, that has to be the hardest part of the whole trail, guys. We've done that like three times. Yeah, that's the worst part. Oh my god. For reference, that's the observatory. <sighs> Honestly, outside is overrated. But just as the day was drawing to an end, we finally approached the summit. As if planned by some higher power, we reached the top just in time to watch as the sun set over Hollywood, bringing a perfect scenic end to our first day. Okay, now, do you think that it was worth it to listen to Professor Rex uh, and follow him to the top of this mountain? I'm gonna f kill you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Except, now we had to work out how we were going to get back down the mountain. Our initial plan was to meet the next member of our group at the peak, but despite the giant signal tower next to us, none of us had any connection, and we had no idea how far away he was. We also had to work out the closest place we could get a lift from, as going back the way we came would not only take another three hours, but would be practically suicidal in the dark. But as the night started to roll in, we finally found our guy, and started making our way back down the cold, dark mountain road. 
Erin needs to change out my sunglasses. <laughs> to cap off the night, the boys took me out for Chick-fil-A to help immerse me more in American culture. And while most people turned in for an early night to prepare for tomorrow, I stayed up late to finally meet my friend Venti. Hey! My man! Hey. <laughs> All this walking, and I left my pokey walkers at home. Aww. It's down so many watts. The big day was finally here. The first day of the Sino Tour. While the stadium event was only open on Saturday and Sunday, Friday gave you the option of playing the event throughout the entirety of LA. We were heading to Santa Monica Pier for the day, which is apparently a very popular spot for Pokemon Go players to hang out. My goals for this tour were quite simple. While most of the shiny Pokemon I could already get easily enough in Generation 4, I did have my eye on a few special targets that were rare within Pokemon Go. Spiritomb is one of my favourite shinies, and in Go you normally only get to encounter a single one per year around Halloween, so this would hopefully be the best chance of ever finding a shiny. I was also hoping to find a costume shiny, such as Pikachu or Chimchar wearing the protagonist's hats, as those might not be available again. And the most coveted prize of all would be catching a shiny legendary with a location background, something that you can only get at in-person events like this. And a few months after announcing the Sinnoh tour, they revealed it was going to be a joint Hisui tour, introducing the origin forms of Dialga and Palkia, so finding a shiny or a good IV one with a location background was a high priority. Shiny Unknown was also one to look out for. While they aren't Generation 4 Pokemon, Unknown are normally absurdly rare in the wild, but often appear during large events like this to spell out certain words, this time spelling out Sinnoh and Hisui, and the shiny letters S, H and U would be new additions to my collection. Chatop, Carnivine and Pachirisu would also be highly sought after shinies, as they can normally only be found in certain parts of the world. But at the end of the day, while Go is a good excuse to get outside, I'm more of a main series player. And while Pokemon from Go can be transferred into home, many of these shinies that are artificially rare within Go can be easily hunted in other games. Not to mention that costume Pokemon can't be transferred, and location cards won't appear outside of Go either. But there is a rare kind of Pokemon that can be sent to home and can't be found or hunted almost anywhere else, other than during this Sinnoh tour, and it's something Professor Rex has been chasing for almost three years. A shiny level 1 roaming legendary. As well as featuring Pokemon from the chosen region, the regional tours also like to pay tribute to the original games. For example, each tour has made you choose which game version you want to play, which would then influence your chance of finding version-exclusive Pokemon, and when the Johto tour was released, you were given a guaranteed encounter with a red Gyarados. You could also encounter Raikou, Entei, and Suicune just like you could in the original Gold and Silver as roaming legendaries. Instead of being found in raids like usual, they would appear randomly in the wild like any other Pokemon, but with a high chance of running away if you didn't catch them. This feature was also used for the Hoenn Tour, with Latios and Latias roaming around depending on what version you picked. What makes these roaming Pokemon extra special is they have the same range of levels as any other wild Pokemon in Go. While Pokemon from Raids are level 20 or 25, and Pokemon from Research Encounters are level 15, wild Pokemon can go as high as level 35, but more importantly they can be as low as level 1. While originally only Mesprit and Cresselia were found roaming in Sinnoh in Diamond and Pearl, for the Sinnoh Tour they decided that Mesprit should be joined by Yuxi and Azelf. These Pokemon are actually available all of the time. Much like Unknown, there is an extremely small chance you can encounter one of these Pokemon, but there's estimated to be fewer than 50 in the wild at any given time spread out across the entire planet, and each of the three spirits only appears in one part of the world. Fortunately, they will be much more common for this weekend, and unlike normal, they would also have a chance to be shiny, meaning that your chance to get a low-level shiny lake spirit will be limited to only a very brief window of five days, three of which were only available here at the in-person event in Los Angeles. And as we made our way to Santa Monica, I quickly realised how badly Rex wanted the level 1 shiny, as on the way, he found a shiny and chose not to catch it, as Pokemon that you haven't registered in your Pokedex yet will appear with higher priority on your nearby radar, allowing you to find them more easily, a strategy Rex has used to hunt roamers on previous tour events, although we later found out for this event that Yuxi, Mesprit and Azelf would always appear on your radar if there was one nearby. And as we got closer to our destination, we all saw a Mesprit on our radar and Rex suggested we jump out of the car early to run after it. Thankfully, he let the driver pull over first, but then we all took off running towards the Lake Spirit, and I was immediately feeling the pain from yesterday's hike. Let's go, squad! Let's go! Let's go! But in the end, jumping out was worth it after all, as we immediately found our first level 1 Mesprit. Did you find yours? Yeah, it's not shiny. Wait, oh, that's fucking a, the Mesprit's the one that's level, level 1. one. Oh, I got it! Oh, Shortly after, we regrouped with the rest of the party and spent the next hour raiding and going after Romas, even finding an extra small Yuxi, which Venti found as a shiny. Shiny tiny Yuxi! Yo! Yo! Right after the Mesprit! 
Speaking of sizes, everyone in the group noticed a significant increase in huge Pokemon appearing. We'd all seen about a dozen of them within just the first hour, while this Uxie was the first extra tiny one that I'd seen. While this bonus wasn't announced anywhere, it seemed like the rate of extra large Pokemon was almost certainly being boosted, likely as a reference to the Alpha Pokemon found in Legends Arceus. As we were going around Santa Monica, we were also keeping an eye out for Spiritomb stops. While almost every other non-legendary Sinnoh Pokemon was either spawning in the wild or hatching from eggs this weekend, Spiritomb was different. You could only get them by finding and spinning special Pokestops featuring Spiritomb. There were a total of 108 Spiritomb stops spread out across the entire city of Los Angeles, a number that's very important to Spiritomb, and we actually found a few of them on Thursday at the Griffith Observatory, but they didn't do anything until today, where spinning a new Spiritomb stop would now grant you a Spiritomb encounter, up to a maximum of 10 for the entire weekend. This saved us having to go all around LA to find them all, but it was still a shame they made it so limited. Like I said before, Spiritomb is one of my favourite shinies, and surely finding one with only 10 encounters would be extremely unlikely. I'm, I'm doing them incrementally, because I gotta, I gotta know. I'm winning. Oh, oh yeah! Cool Master of Obscure oh. Grass and Ghost Types yeah. over here. Whoa! Are you yes! Looking? Got it! Yes! 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 After stopping to grab some lunch, we decided to make our way to the pier itself, which was full of people walking up and down doing raids. And I spent the next few hours alternating between raiding origin forms with Venti and chasing after roaming lake spirits with Rax, despite the better judgement of my aching legs. Near the end of the day, we finally decided to get some scooters to ease some of the burden, but to my dismay, they wouldn't let me make an account with my British phone number. So after Rex blasted off to find some more roamers, I was back to using my feet like a chump. Oh, oh my legs hurt so much. Oh, this is bad. Oh, oh, oh. And as we went into the final event hour for the day, I finally found my first Raid Shiny, although it wasn't an origin form and had possibly the worst IVs you could ask for. But on the bright side, it did have a location background. In fact, every legendary we'd raided today had one, which was a pleasant surprise given how rare they were when I was at London Go Fest. We cranked out a few more raids and I finally found a good Palkia, before learning the hard way that while the raids didn't disappear after 5pm, anything caught after that time would no longer have a background or any of the exclusive moves. While this was a mild annoyance for those of us that had used a raid pass on this Origin Dialga, it was especially rough on Nick in particular. Moment of truth, moment of truth. Yeah, oh my dude. god, make sure All right. not to pee root it. Alright. No, it doesn't have I it! Know. Yeah. No, oh, it doesn't. Oh, I know! I back! To ease our sorrows and save some money on Ubers, we hopped on a quick train ride halfway home, stopping in West Hollywood for some Korean barbecue. And after a few rounds of soju and a lot of all-you-can-eat meats, we made our way home to wind down the rest of the night playing Jackbox and Smash Bros, where I took the chance to introduce the Americans to some quality British culture. Oh, dude, do you have any cheeky endos? Nah, sorry, I couldn't get us to play too much meat. Alright, so I got Jaffa cakes. Oh, look, we're trying British Saturday was the big game day. While we could play anywhere in Los Angeles on the Friday, the main event was taking place in the Rose Bowl Stadium, and you were only allowed to buy a citywide Friday or weekend ticket if you had a ticket for the stadium event itself. For this event, the whole stadium as well as the neighbouring golf course were closed off from the public, and not only would the area be decorated with banners, props and activities, but the area in-game would also be filled with gyms, Pokestops and Pokemon spawns, so players could roam free, catching and raiding to their heart's content. There was only one slight problem. I bought my ticket for the wrong day. I, I, I don't know how, but somehow I thought we were planning to go to the stadium on Sunday, and it wasn't until we were only a month out from the event that I realised everyone else in the group except me had tickets for Saturday. Immediately I tried reaching out to support to see if it was possible for my ticket day to be changed, but for some reason they told me they can't do that, and the only option was refunding my ticket and then buying the right ticket afterwards. Not wanting to be stuck without a ticket if both days suddenly sold out, I asked them to clarify if I could buy the right ticket immediately, or if I would have to wait while the refund was processed, as I was told that might take almost two weeks. After waiting a whole day for a reply from support, they didn't really answer my question at all, but I could tell the clock was ticking, so I bit the bullet and told them to go ahead with the refund, and asked when I would know when the refund had finished processing so I could grab my Saturday ticket as soon as possible. Another 24 hours passed, and nothing. At this point, I was getting extremely anxious. If I couldn't swap my ticket date, I'd be split up from the group on both Saturday and Sunday, and I was already feeling anxious enough about this whole trip. And after another 14 hours of silence, my worst fear was realised. The Saturday tickets had sold out. I quickly rushed to tell support that I'd changed my mind, and to my delight, they'd been extremely busy doing absolutely nothing, so my Sunday ticket was still locked in. Well, my work is done here. What do you mean your work is done? You don't do anything! While this did put me back at square one, I am nothing if not overly prepared. Before I even started talking to support, I had already prepared my backup plan. Buying a Saturday ticket on a friend's account. 
This way, I'd still be able to enjoy the event if both days sold out while I was waiting for the refund process, and now it meant I had a way into the stadium with the rest of the boys, even if it meant I was missing out on my own account. The event started at 9am sharp, but we decided that getting there early wasn't actually a good idea. There was no point getting up early just to stand in a massive line to get inside, as you could still catch Pokemon outside the stadium during the event hours, so there was no real rush to get in. And as we found out later, this was definitely the right call. Apparently there were delays getting people into the stadium when the event started, and as an apology they were extending the citywide event for an extra three hours that day. Not to mention the area immediately outside the stadium was a complete blackout, meaning you couldn't even catch Pokemon while standing in line. So instead, we kicked back and opened a few packs of cards while we waited for everyone else to get ready, then split off into separate cars to the stadium, making it quickly through the remaining queue and entering by half ten, giving us plenty of time to hunt and explore the Sinnoh region. And after regrouping with the squad, Rex pointed me in the direction of an underleveled Utsi that was only a few minutes away from despawning, so I rushed off to find it. So I'd look at the yellow tent. There's the yellow tent. Yellow tent. Oh. Huh? Yellow tent, you said. Oh, the white tent. Uh, well, why'd you say it's the yellow tent? Well, I can't it's read. Oh, I see it. Okay, here we go. Oh. <gasps> Shiny! Yes! Oh, let's go! Yes! Oh. You got Shiny Utsi! While not level 1, a level 8 shiny Uxie was still really awesome to find. With Uxie in the bag, the hunt for more shinies at Romas and Legendaries continued for the next few hours. We found a weird TV that didn't seem to do anything, a big owl, a few more shiny spiritums. Oh, shiny! Spiritum check. Yes! Yeah, let's go! A shiny Dialga, a subtle shiny Palkia. Shiny, 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 shiny. Nope, not a regular one. Oh, wait, no, it is shiny! What? What? Yeah. A tiny spirit tomb, and Tops even managed to snag the level 1 shiny Azelf. God, let's go! And perhaps most important of all, we found some more pizza. We also found this big ruin that I think was meant to be the Temple of Sinnoh, and eventually we managed to wrangle everyone together for photos. At around half three, we'd seen pretty much everything we needed to in the stadium, so Rex offered to accompany me out to Old Town Pasadena so I could actually get some raids done on my own account. Here we are, in Old Town Pasadena. Yeehaw. Here, here we are. Old Town Pasadena. Yeehaw! Okay, and Wolfmeet about to get shiny 467 CP. Yep. Okay, well that's... Okay. Here we go, shiny unknown H. It's over there. No, I, I'm not in love with these ones. I thought they'd grown on me a bit. I think they do look like more godlike, I guess. Yeah. With a few more raids under my belt, we made our way back to the house to regroup for dinner, although not before stopping for some milkshakes. While some people split off to go to in and out I did a few more last minute raids with Venti before the extended event hours ended, which thankfully paid off. Hopefully that's the location card, dude. Yeah, Prepare hopefully. Everybody. I really hope there's a location card. And I hope they didn't mess up, like, because they extended the raid hours or whatever. Oh my god, I didn't think about the, the move. Yeah. Uh... But unfortunately, this time there was no location card to be found. Earlier today, we realised that while location cards were guaranteed on every raid yesterday, this was seemingly a mistake, as now it was only a random chance like all other events. After getting some dinner for ourselves, we returned home to put our feet up and unwind, and enjoy another night of good company. Sunday was the big game day. Again. While the rest of the gang went to spend their city day in Little Tokyo, I got a lift back to the stadium with Noah, who also had his stadium ticket for today. But this time, I wasn't here to mess around. The entire time I was here yesterday, I wasn't just playing and enjoying a fun day out with friends. I was taking notes, mapping out routes, strategizing time saves, and secretly preparing to attempt something never done before, and will never be done again. Here's how I set the world record Sinnoh Tour Los Angeles speedrun. All right, so here's the plan. We're gonna get in, we're gonna speed run. We oh can do God. this okay. like okay. as fast as you can. I don't know if Rex told you on this, but that's been like my plan now. Just speed since, running? Yeah, since finding out that I was gonna be on like the wrong days, I was like, you know what? I've, I've scouted the thing out. Okay. I know what we gotta do. We gotta like just go in and get the research done, do like whatever relevant things we need. And then, we can either just sort of sit down and chill for a bit. When, when we're ready, we can just go and like meet up with the other guys and just join them in like Little Tokyo. Sinotor speedrun pro tip number one, 
We've rolled up at like, what time is it now actually? It's like, it's like half 10. 10.30. Yeah, 10.30. Yeah. So we can, just, we can just stroll right in. But while the line to get through security was small, it wasn't as easy as we'd hoped. Okay, so um, pro tip of Cinematore speedrunning number two, don't bring in too fancy of a camera because my friend Noah, he just got stopped and they're not gonna let him in. So we gotta wait for someone to come back and pick up his equipment before he can get in. I'm gonna have to set a timer now, actually. This is, okay, this is actual speedrun things. I'm, I'm, I'm burning time here. Okay, so, all right, sooner to a speed run, let's do this. I'll put up, maybe I'll put up a live split or whatever. That'll be funny. Okay, uh, no, okay. Let's go, all right. All right, speed run time. Oh God, my legs already hurt. Okay, let's, let's go open the game, shoot. While Noah dealt with his camera situation, he told me to go on without him and to never forget his noble sacrifice. Now entirely on my own, I was down a cameraman, but the speedrun had to press on. The goal was to complete the Sinotour 2024 research as fast as possible. For my first task, I simply had to use an incense and catch 10 different Pokemon. But the second part of the research was the main roadblock here, as this could only be done from inside the stadium, and would involve covering a lot of ground. The area was divided into four habitats, and you had to spin three Pokestops from each one. And in order to visit every habitat, you would have to traverse the whole length of the area, starting from the stadium and going up to the tip of the golf course. Unless, of course, you were prepared for this and started at the side entrance, allowing you to hit the stops in the seaside habitat as you pass through the mountain hot spring. As I made the trek up to the last habitat, I grabbed a few raids on the way past the entangled ruins. Thanks to the sheer number of people raiding, Dialgas and Palkias were dropping like flies, so this didn't result in any time lost. Oh, yo, shiny Voltorb. Oh hell yeah, I really want this one. Pro tip number 12. If you want to go pick up your shirt, that's going to take quite a lot of time because everyone's going to rush to get it. So ideally you want to get it like a few hours later. But the real, real pro tip is you don't have to wait in line if you already got your shirt the day before. That's optimal speed running, that's prep. I should not be running. Yeah, bad idea. Pressing onwards, I eventually made it to the edge of the bubbling mire, and after quickly catching a Hundo Bidoof without realising, I unlocked my next tasks. To catch a Dialga and use its signature move Roar of Time. The space-time distortion had just ended, so I had to catch a regular Dialga for this, but thankfully I already had plenty of origin form Dialgas from the last few days, otherwise I would have suffered a 30 minute time loss on this part of the run, as only the origin form can use Roar of Time. After completing that task, I immediately switched over to Spatial Ren though, as the increased spawn radius effect proved extremely useful in the last couple of days for finding roaming legendaries and shinies, but I'd held off from using it yet today knowing that I'd have to swap to Roar of Time for the research, which would have ended the effect of Spatial Rend. This is another part of the run that could have been more optimised, as if I'd picked the Pearl version for this event, I'd have had to use Spatial Ren for this part instead, and I could have been using it the whole time without worrying about wasting dust or candy. Part 5 of the research was to evolve 3 Pokemon with Sinnoh Stones and hatch 3 eggs. With several eggs already incubating in preparation, and three Pokemon already on standby for evolving, I breathed through into the final part of the research, where I took down Sierra, crushed Arlo, hatched a shiny Mime Junior, got distracted fighting a few Origin Dialgas, had a tiny Mesprit run away from me, caught a shiny as Elf, remembered that I was in the middle of a speedrun, and defeated Cliff. With the stadium research finished, all I had to do was quickly complete the Shaman research, and we were going to... Okay, so we're not doing the Shaman. I think that's that's probably time actually. We're at. Uh, hang on. That's one hour, five minutes, fifty-two seconds. I think that's world record. World record, personal best. Okay, now I just got to do all the other actual parts now. With the speed run finished, I was free to enjoy the stadium at my own pace, catching more powerful Dialgas getting free stuff at the trainer tents, seeing the sights, and even catching more level 1 roamers. But it didn't feel right. You know, I got I got the Sinotaur world record, I got a shiny Azelf, got a pretty nice Dialga, but I don't know, it doesn't feel right. There's something missing. And I think I know what it is. It's, it's the boys. All my friends are out there doing the city experience right now, and you know, even Noah couldn't get into the park with all his high-tech camera equipment, so I've been all on my own for like the last hour. And, you know, I think that's what really made yesterday special. It wasn't, I mean, yeah, it sucked that I couldn't get the raids done on my main. It sucked that all the stuff I got, you know, I have to trade later. But 
just being there with friends was really fun. I think that is the ultimate Sinnoh Tour Pro Tip. The real speed run. <laughs> I did a straight face. The real speed run is the friends we made along the way. With that in mind, I set out to find some friends. I saw on Twitter that Abzor Blog's Pokemon was somewhere around, so I decided to keep an eye out for him while I regrouped with Noah, who thankfully made it into the park with all of his gear by just walking to the other entrance where security didn't care as much. In the end, we stuck around the stadium for a while longer, and after about an hour and a half, I decided to lay a trap that any hardcore Pokemon trainer couldn't resist, touching Pokewalkers. And after helping Noah film for a project of his own, I saw that the bait had been taken, and soon enough, a wild Absol appeared, along with Poseidon and Gremlin Gremlin. Alright, about to tap Pokewalkers with Tan Wolf Meat. I'm about to tap Pokewalkers with the Absol Blogs Pokemon. By this point, we only had a few hours left before the event ended, and it would be too much hassle to try and track down and reunite with the other guys as they were roaming around Little Tokyo. So we spent the rest of the day hanging around with these guys. I also have to give props to WiseGuy7513, one of Absol's fans who granted me my first ever taste of Baja Blast. You may have been Mike Wazowski at an Absol's last video, but this drink is dedicated to you. We spent the rest of our time hunting down Pikachu, getting some last minute raids done, and even finding an Azelf at the last second, which, just like me, didn't want to go yet. Yeah, everybody go yeah. home. <laughs> oh no, the, the, they have one oh, oh, it stayed, it stayed oh, after, it come broke on, out. Come on, get it. It broke out, but it stayed. <laughs> you got one. Excellent. Excellent. Yep, yeah, come on. Three shakes. One, two, no. Stay, 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 stay. <gasps> oh, the three. Oh my god, the three ball. Three. No. Oh, no. Stay, 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 stay. <gasps> what? what? The odds this on that. The one. Come on. One. I, Come on. I, I need, I need my, my Matang luck here. Is it going to stay again? Oh, what? What? what is this? What is happening? Is this some weird past five o'clock nonsense going on here or what? <laughs> Maybe. Excellent. Okay. Just one and then. Oh, no. <laughs> what, what, is, what is actually going on here? What is going it's on here? Over. Yeah, it's, it's like going to be something like crazy glitch. What it's supposed to do. I hope I can actually catch it. Yeah. yeah. Like. It's pretty sad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This is definitely. Yeah. There's, there's no way I've rolled like a 10% chance that many times. I'm, I'm not even. I'm that lucky. Two. Three. And, and it stayed. Wow. <laughs> mm. That's funny. That, uh, that's got to be the most insane clip ever. <laughs> <laughs> and caught in the wilds with my party, but no. Yeah, no talk. Oh, wow. yeah. Nice. That's rare. Let's yeah. Go. And with that, the event was finally over. With no more Pokemon appearing in the stadium, they didn't even need to announce that the event was over for people to start leaving in droves. I said my goodbyes and ran for my getaway vehicle before the Niantic police could catch me. Get it, get it, get it. Oh, this is, oh, this is us. Get in. Oh, they opened the door. Oh, dude, the door. dude, dude, they're get on in. you. They're get on in. you. Go, go, go. Oh, that's, uh, oh. Oh, 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 you're looking at me. Go, 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 go! To celebrate our final night, we grabbed some pizzas and took turns scribbling our names on other people's stuff. And thanks to Shiny Collector bringing his set of legitimate distribution cartridges, we might have been the only people at Sinotaur who actually got to catch Arceus. As much as I wanted to make the most of my remaining time with everyone, I had to be up early for my flight home. I shared a final dessert with my Snorlax for the week before heading to bed. And while I've done a lot of scripting and narration for this video to add my thoughts in retrospect, I think it's best if I let myself speak in the moment here. There's probably a lot that I could say right now, but I think all I really need to say is that it's only February and this is probably, almost certainly, the highlight of my year. I don't think anything's going to top this this year. After an apparently restless night of sleep, it was time to go home. The rain that had been forecast for the weekend had graciously stayed away, but finally appeared to throw a fittingly gloom overcast onto the morning. I hitched a ride to the airport and grabbed my last American meal for the trip, and as I travel montage my way home for the next grueling 26 hours on barely any sleep, I could take solace in the fact that I'd made so many new friends on this trip, and unlike the Pokemon on my original copy of Diamond that I lost on a plane when I was 7, these Sinnoh friends would stay with me forever. And at least my trip home was way shorter than the Pikmin I sent on foot. I'm so sorry, little buddy. I quickly want to give a massive thanks to Professor Rex and Tops, Dynamo Gear, Gremlin Gremlin, Absol Blogs Pokemon, and everyone else who I was with who shared footage and pics with me, and shout out to all of the awesome people that I met and crashed with in LA. I also have to thank everyone who subscribed and liked my stuff on this channel. This wouldn't have been possible without some of the people I've met through making videos, and while I'm not making a lot of money from doing this, ad revenue certainly helped soften the blow on some travel expenses. 
this isn't my usual type of video, but if you guys liked it, then maybe I'll do it again sometime. I could definitely use the excuse. Canned wolf meat. Amazing and very wholesome.